this is abusive. And y'all might take this as a joke, but it looks like Chris is in a domestic violence relationship. And Krista is wrong as well. I do not want to excuse her out of the equation. Krista should know better than to be biting her. You are inflicting physical pain on your partner who has been in abusive relationships. You don't do that shit. See, it's different when you're like poking at somebody all the time or poking their ear. That's different from actually physically hurting someone. When you're play fighting with your partner, it starts off all happy and all go lucky, everyone's giggling and shit, until shit gets real. And in abusive relationships, that's how it usually starts. Then the person doing the physical harm, playfully, starts to get comfortable. And that's when shit hits the fan. The reason why I'm choosing to do this video is because a lot of my viewers are misinformed in the subject of domestic violence and what's considered physical abuse. I spoke up on Krista and Alexis's video. I seem to believe is domestic violence. I spoke from first-hand experience and people who have been in domestic violence relationships will notice a lot more than your average person who has not been in one. So when I noticed these signs, I spoke up about it. This is a serious, sensitive topic, so this is a trigger warning. In my comments, people don't just want to go off of my experience. So I went ahead and reached out to a professional in psychology and I will have a conversation with her about domestic violence and what is considered physical abuse. Hi! Can you hear me? Oh, yep, can you hear me? All right, yes, I could hear you. Hi, finally, it's finally nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> I know that you have some great qualifications for this video, so I'm glad that you're here. I DM'd you and there was no hesitation. You were quick to be on, so thank you. You're welcome. So I want you to introduce yourself um, to my viewers. Can you let them know your name and what your qualifications are? Mm -hmm. So my name is Anastasia. Um, I am from Chicago, but I studied in um, a couple different places around the world. So my background is in journalism. So my bachelor's is in broadcast and um, my master's is in analytical psychology. Um, so when I was studying my, for my undergrad, uh, when I was studying journalism, I wrote an article actually about domestic violence and it was published on Chicago Talks. Okay, um, I have experience, firsthand experience, but it's good to hear a professional opinion on it. And a lot of my viewers seem to be very misinformed on the subject and I don't want them to be in situations that they might not know that they're in. What is domestic violence and what types are there? So domestic violence is basically when there is violent behavior happening within a relationship within a home specifically. That's pretty much like the basic yeah. like definition but the different types of domestic violence can range from physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, and I would also personally add spiritual abuse. So we're gonna focus a lot on physical abuse. Um, they're all equally as important, obviously, but I just wanna focus on that. What types of behaviors or actions fall under that category? Physical abuse, I would say, is any unwanted, um, non-consensual touch. So I would say that can range from somebody even just like grabbing your arm, um, grabbing your neck, pushing you, um, and then that also can go to the other extreme, which is like actually somebody like beating you up, punching you, and things mm. like that. I think that there is like, we tend to kind of see domestic violence in this very extreme way. Right. Like, oh, well, because they didn't punch me in the face, like, it's okay. But it's not, even if it's at like the lower levels of like extreme, which is still like somebody grabbing you, somebody pushing you, somebody like, you know, nudging you or, or things like that. Like that's, that's still abuse, even though it's 
in a different part of the spectrum. Is violence genetic or environmental? I honestly feel like it's a little bit of both in a way. So mm. it's definitely more environmental. I would say that like domestic violence is something usually people learn to process like their emotions and things that they're going through in an aggressive behavior. So usually a person thinks like I have to resort to this kind of behavior in order to get what I want. Uh. Um, so I feel like that's learned. A lot of times that is like learned behavior. You usually learn that from somebody like because you weren't taught how to process your emotions and work through your emotions in a way that's not violent. Um, but on a level, I also think it's epigenetic. So not exactly like genetic, but epigenetics is basically things that are passed down through family lines mm. that weren't that weren't addressed or healed. So in a spiritual sense, you could kind of see that as, as karma. In a sense, it can be epigenetic, but I would say mostly so it's, in, it's, in, it's taught. When it comes to male victims, I know that they don't report their abuse often. So do yeah. female abusers differ from male abusers? Men and women, um, I would say are equally as like aggressive. Like we have similar, I think, feelings of like anger and things like that. But our training, like in our adolescence is like, okay, men are taught, you can be physically aggressive. Like you can be tough and show off like physical strength. Whereas I feel like women, like our conditioning is that we're taught to be um, very like emotional and mm. not physically aggressive and we're taught to be aggressive in ways that are like more conniving. I think it's more common that female abusers will not resort to physical abuse. Mm. But that's not to say that they won't because 100% um, female abusers will can will and can be physical. Um, but I think that it's in a general sense, women will not resort as much to physical and men will resort more to physical. I honestly would think that that's like probably the, probably the biggest difference but as well, um, I think that it can range so many levels because you could be, you know, in a in a hetero like male female relationship, and maybe the woman is physically stronger than the man, and uh. she will, you know, resort to physical violence. So it's also like it's hard to say because I think it, it really depends on the particular relationship as well. Mm. That leads me to same sex relationships, and when it comes to domestic violence. I have experience in this. I have only had three relationships. I'm gay. So my first two relationships were, I was a victim of domestic violence. So what is the difference, if there is any, when it comes to same-sex relationships and heterosexual relationships? At least in my opinion, I think it still goes along the lines of like, that it is really dependent on the particular relationship itself between the two people, as opposed to like the difference in gender as much. Mm. Um, I would imagine that in some same-sex relationships, maybe because it is like man and man and woman and woman, there could be a similar conditioning there. So like maybe a man and man relationship, it would be more easy to resort to physical violence mm. or, you know, things like that. But like at the same time, like I honestly just think that it, it's person to person. It's like situation by situation. It's relationship by relationship because I, I know women who have physically abused each other. Um, even like in my in my own life, like my parents' relationship, like my my mom and dad, like they beat the crap out of each other equally. Oh wow! So even on a personal level, each person's conditioning, um, how that would affect how they respond to violence in a relationship as well. Right, right. And yeah, I uh, wonder how how that would be. If a victim was to fight back. Would that be considered self-defense or would it be abusive as well? I think it could be self-defense for sure. Um, I think that, you know, there's stories like, what was her name? Lorena Bobbitt. Was that her name? The lady who chopped off her husband's Oh, shoot. Penis? <laughs> I yeah. don't know about this. What? No. <gasps> Why did yes, she do so that? <laughs> I can't remember. When was it? I oh think it had to have been like the late 90s. And he was abusing her over and over and over again. And she wasn't fighting back for so long mm -hmm. and um one day she finally got the opportunity and she she cut off his, his damn because he was sexually abusing her as well mm. so um 
she thinks she had to go to court and everything. And um, yeah, she won the case because she it did. Was, yeah, she won the case because he was abusing her for so long. I think there's situations where it's like, okay, that's completely self-defense. Like somebody was like torturing you and like things like that. And you finally hit like a point where you're like, I can't take this anymore. Um, but I think that sometimes people will start to fight back. And at first it's self-defense, but right. then it becomes abuse. Right. You know, then it becomes you're both like abusing each other, even though one person may have started it. Well, now, like, that line has been crossed over so much, so I think exactly. it can be mutually abusive then. And I'm going to ask that question again later um, okay. when we talk about something else. How can domestic violence affect a victim in the future? Is it more, li more likely for them to go from one abusive relationship to another? I would say if somebody is in an abusive relationship and then they kind of jump into something pretty quickly without working through... Um, the trauma without working through the triggers and becoming conscious of like the conditioning from that relationship. If somebody just jumps into something else, I think it's very, very common and very often you'll find yourself in a similar situation. But if you don't find yourself in a similar situation, I feel like even in my own experience, those triggers will still be there very much. And even if those things are not happening in you know, the next relationship, like, you will feel a lot more like relationship anxiety. Um, mm. I think that people will tend to feel um, more not at ease with like, just letting the relationship kind of flow in a way because you'll have all these triggers and you're like, oh, is that like a red flag? Or even if it's not oh, a red flag, or wow. is this my intuition? Or is this, a, is this a problem? Like, is this not a problem? So I think it causes a lot of mental fogginess you know because you haven't worked through that and I think that a lot of times like the lens of how you'll see a relationship is so tainted by the previous one that you may not even be able to see the current relationship clearly mm. um, so I think that that's like initially how it affects you but I think as well if you endured um, a lot of really like deep abuse um, I think there's, there's a saying that says what well, wires together fires together so your brain, you know, became so used to responding to this partner in a particular way. And so maybe you felt like you were walking on eggshells a lot with them. And maybe you, you knew, oh, I can't do this thing or this person will do this. I, I can't yeah. do this or they're going to freak out. Or I know if I do this, I'm going to get this result. So you kind of trained yourself to, to work with that person in this way. Uh -huh. So then when you go into a new relationship, you, if you still haven't become aware of those things, like you may have, a, you may experience a bit of like paranoia oh, I um, see. with the new person. Overthinking yeah. everything, every little detail. Yeah. Mm, okay. Exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Can a victim also become the abuser? Yes, 100%. Um, I don't know if you know, it's a metal band called Tool. Tool. And they have a familiar. song. Tool, yeah. It's From the 90s, isn't it? I don't like metal music for the most part, but like <laughs> I had this song shown to me years ago. Yeah. And in the song, he has this lyric that says, um, do unto those what has been done unto you. And the song was about people who have gone through traumatic experience and then they inflict that pain on others as a way to kind of um, make hmm. okay what happened to them. Like hurts um, people, hurts people, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. So I think that sometimes victims, um, as a way to empower themselves, as a way to feel some kind of sovereignty over their own experiences, and as a way to kind of like cope with the pain, some people will kind of um, take up a role that's like, okay, uh, well, this was done to me, uh, but like if I do it unto others, it normalizes it. It uh. makes it like okay it makes it that okay that it happened to me because i can do it to other people mm. it's this really weird thing that happens in the brain it's a coping mechanism um and i've seen it happen i have seen it happen i've had it happen to me in relationships where mm. people would be terrible to me and i'd be like why <laughs> you know like mm. why are you doing this and when we would kind of like go into what had maybe happened like in their childhood i was like oh this happened to you and so now you've kind of taken on this behavior, kind of this inverted way that the mind will 
kind of deal with really intense pain. Mm. And, Does that make a person toxic, if that's the case? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah that's the word. I would say that <laughs> somebody who didn't take the time to work through how something affected them, and yeah. so it's kind of like you brush something under the rug in a way. Okay. You know, like it's still very much there, but you kind of dealt with it, dealt with it in this way that you didn't really deal with it. If you were in an abusive, a physical abusive relationship in one, you can the abuse can actually be different in the second one, right? It can be emotional, it can be mental, it can change, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to play fighting, okay, this is the big conversation that I've been having in the last few videos. I'm getting a lot of hate comments only because they're not really understanding why I'm saying certain things. I'm only speaking yeah. from experience. So when it comes to play fighting, I looked at the definition of play fight and it says an, an unrefereed contest in which participants try to dominate each other without inflicting injury. Now when people think injury, when we talked about this, they think about something you know, severe like broken bones, things like that. So I looked up the word injure. I, I like to look up words. So, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it says do physical harm or damage to someone. So it doesn't mean broken bones, bruises. It doesn't just mean that. That being said, when is play fighting healthy and when can play fighting be considered abuse? And I was like thinking back <laughs> to like my own experiences with it as well. And I was like, okay, like I found that when I play fought with someone, it was like really lighthearted. Like there was like, like you, like we both knew we were playing. Neither one of us was really trying like that hard. We were like laughing a lot and there was, there was no physical pain. It was more like maybe like noogies or maybe right. like kind of wrestle a little bit. Like it was just like really playful and light. Like there was really no pain happening. Right, right. Um, I would say that there's like a line though. There's a line where like, okay, right now, like you're goofing around a little bit, like, like tumbling maybe a little, like maybe like a little like light touch or whatever. But I feel like there's like this line where it's like somebody actually starts to try to hurt you, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. there comes a point where it's like people aren't laughing anymore and like the mood changes a little bit and somebody actually gets like hurt. As I think that when people are play fighting, there's less understanding usually where you're like, I'm not really going to hurt you. Right. You know? But um, I had a friend who her and her partner would play fight a lot. And she was like, yeah, she's like, it's so weird. She's like, we, we play fight all the time. Um, she goes, and I feel like we're actually fighting though. And really? Like what? Like and in the middle like, of yeah. it, they just get serious. Yeah, she was like, we would start kind of like play fighting and she's like, but I knew like deep down we were really like pissed at each other. Damn. And so we didn't know how to deal with it. So when we would play fight, she's like, suddenly the mood would kind of change a little. And she's like, and I kind of felt like we were pretending like we were play fighting. She's like, but we we're really fighting. Play fighting is okay as long as it doesn't lead to that direction, correct? Yeah, I would say so. I would say as long as there's like this consensual understanding of like, I don't, I'm not going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. We're playing around a little bit. We're like tumbling around a little bit. Like nobody's going to like seriously get hurt. Um, and then, I would say like, yeah, that's probably the line. Let's say they start to play fight and then one person is the only one causing the harm and mm -hmm. the other person by just a, a quick reflex hits them back. Would you consider that self-defense? I kind of would, honestly, because I think that if, like, you've kind of entered into the space where you're like, oh, we're just playing around, mm -hmm. and then somebody starts to hurt you, and let's say you're like, hey, stop, and they don't listen to you, and then you're like, stop, you know, <laughs> that I would see right. that as self-defense, because it's like, okay, you already said stop, they didn't listen to you, so sometimes mm -hmm. I think you do need to physically protect yourself. I agree. Um, so I would say. And is it possible that people who do play fight cross the line of being too physical and being abusive. Is it possible that, that they might not realize the situation that they're in? Yeah, I think some people, they definitely may not know. Um, I think for a lot of people, a lot of people are naive, you know, I think that's one thing. A lot of people have to go through certain experiences in life to still like wake up to people's behavior and how people really are in the world. And I think when you're younger, it's really common. Like when you're younger, you're kind of like, no, they don't, 
No, and mm. there's this level of like ignorance and there's a level of like being really young and there's a level of like um, not wanting to, to see reality as it is because you're so caught up in like how you hope to see things in your life, which is part of being naive. Um, but I also think that outside of that, sometimes when people are so deep in a relationship, they can't see clearly because they love the person or love the person and things like that. So I, I feel like some people also sometimes see it, but they don't want to see it. So they uh, deny it. Right. And then that also leads me to, um, to ask you if the victim was being brutally, physically abused in a previous relationship and they come into a, a healthier relationship, but the only physical harm that's being done is during play fight. Is that why their mind is clouded? Like, well, this is nothing. Like this is, I would not consider this abuse because I felt the punches and the smacks from my previous relationship. Like I would imagine that if I was in a relationship where there was like serious like physical abuse, um, I would think that if I were to even enter into something where there was just play fighting, it would be really triggering. I would, mm. I would think that that normally would be the case. But if the person isn't triggered by the play fighting um, and kind of doesn't see that as an issue, yeah, I would, I would wonder if the, if the line would be kind of blurred because it isn't, it isn't this extreme that they experience and it is like this other end of the spectrum. Yeah. I would wonder if like they're, they're, perspective would be clouded because they've experienced this extreme. Yes, that's something that I, w I thought of, but I wasn't too sure. I have a list of actions that I would like for you to just answer yes or no to. If it's yes, um, it's abusive, or no, it's not. Um, okay. So, spitting. Spitting? Yes, yeah, spitting. Uh, yes. Kicking. Yes. Punching. Yes. Scratching. Yes. Strangling. Yes. Pulling hair. Yes. Biting. Okay, wait, the biting and the pulling hair, maybe some people would like that in sex. <laughs> I, I do, right, you know? right. I like, Se sex is, like, sex is different. Right, right, okay, right. Okay, okay. But when it comes yeah, to like yeah. play fighting or just random after fighting, arguing, let's differentiate that from sex. Okay, okay. Because you're yeah, right, yeah. girl, because I like that type of shit. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, I don't mind that. Yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. So, so. <laughs> So, okay, let's go back to that. Biting. Yes. <laughs> Slapping. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. For my viewers who are interested in getting to know you and the work that you do, where can they find you on social media? Uh, so my Instagram is Wild Owl Woman. Uh, and then like my psychology Instagram is Wild Owl underscore Psyche. Um, and then my YouTube is Wild Owl Psyche. So to all my viewers, I will be posting that in my description in case you want to follow her. So, girl, thank you so much for taking this time out with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. I will be You're talking welcome. to you shortly, okay? Okay, amazing. So thank you. You have a good day, okay? You too. All right, bye-bye. After that conversation, I want to show you the footage that Krista and Alexis posted. This is the footage that led up to this video. Just because we have stop, Krista, the fuck? <sighs> no, it that hurt. Like you gotta stop doing that, seriously. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want my viewers or their viewers to think or believe that this is okay. These are the four things to look out for when play fighting becomes red flags for abuse in a relationship. Play starts without your consent. Play continues in spite of your requests to stop. When any part of the play causes you actual pain. Where I 
I bit her arm really excruciating <laughs> hard. When your partner seems to enjoy inflicting pain on you. What the fuck? Stop, Krista, the fuck? No, <sighs> oh, that hurt. And I, and I feel like it's so funny to annoy Alexis because her reactions yeah, she loves to do that. are priceless. And I make it my lifelong duty <laughs> to make Alexis annoyed. I think it's the most funny. That makes my days go by. Yeah, I know. But you're, stop, you're not putting this in. Just letting you know that. Okay. And what I don't like is that they're making it sound or look normal to their viewers. You're having them believe that it's okay and it's not okay. It is not okay. I'm going to say it one more time. It is not okay.